Forrest Barnes joins us live here as a Missouri State University right-handed pitcher, big kid on the mound. How are you this morning, Forrest? I'm pretty good. How are you guys doing today? We're doing great. Ned, fire away, buddy. Okay. Hey, Forrest, thank you very much for taking time to visit with us this morning. You guys have just gotten through with your drills. I watched some of them over at uh, over at Hammonds Field. You got off to such a great start last year. Great start. You're just pitching wonderful baseball, I think, 3-0, and if I remember correctly. And then the season gets shut down. What went through your mind, and, and how, did you, how did you adjust to that? How did you compensate for it? Well, Ned, I just used that as a confidence booster going into the offseason and that quarantine time to continue to better myself and just as momentum to build towards um, this upcoming season. I just used that to, to fuel me, and it just kind of showed me what I'm capable of and what where I can go and what I want to get to. And that just kind of inspired my off season and, and how I trained, and I'm looking forward to getting back out there next season. And, and to that end, Forrest, when you had your spring drills this year, well, spring drills, fall drills this year, and you just concluded, uh, how do you feel about yourself? Are you a better pitcher than you were last spring in your mind? Well, I'm still going through a uh, rehab right now. I had a torn labrum, hip labrum repaired about a month ago. Um, so I'm going through rehab for that right now, but everything's progressing great. And I think by the time that I get back, I will be a much better pitcher um, on the mental side of things as well as more physically prepared to take on the load of a full season as well. How long did it take you to recover from the torn labrum uh, in, in terms of your physical well-being? It's about three to five months, so we're planning on the beginning of February. I'll be off the mound again, and then should be ready for season that first game, February nineteenth, hopefully. February nineteenth, when the snow is blowing all over the place. <laughs> yes, sir. Forrest, do you now? I know down, down at Ozark, you guys usually began not all, not usually always began in the uh, latter part of March. When playing in cold weather, and it always was back then in March and April, how did you, how did you react? Did it bother you at all? Not too much. I obviously, I like I prefer to throw in the warm weather. It helps get my blood moving. I just feel a little bit looser. But I just take I have to prepare a little bit differently in the cold weather and take a little bit longer and just ensure that everything is loose and ready to go so I can go out there and perform at my best no matter what the temperature is. Visiting with Forrest Barnes, ex Ozark High School and now Missouri State University. Your dad played college baseball at Lipscomb, and I think I'm correct at Harding as well. What, what, what did he teach you as a kid? How did how did he impact you? He's influenced me in a great way. You know, growing up, he's always been my pitching coach, and until I've gotten here, and he's always helped me and, and given me drills, and I've, he's always been somebody that I can turn to for questions and advice if I ever need it. If maybe even now, if I don't feel like the coach is here or really getting through to me sometimes I go to him and, and see what his input is and kind of get a different perspective sometimes and it's been really helpful throughout my life. Forrest, tell the kids, uh, the audience a little bit about you yourself. You're an honor roll student at Missouri State. What is, what's your major and how are you intending to direct your career? Right now I'm an exercise and movement science major. When I graduate, I would like to go to physician, to go to PA school and be a physician's assistant eventually. And that's kind of been guiding my education um, path to this point. I have a cousin that's a PA at Mercy, and I've had the opportunity to shadow him a couple times. And after doing that, I decided that's something that I would really like to do and something, some way I can affect the community in a positive way. Forrest, you have uh, really made an impact locally in Christian County. Now you're up here in Greene County. And are you living at home? Are you living on campus? Tell me what it's like being a student over there. I got two that live at my house, or they're from my house that are living on campus. What's it like, and how's it affected you uh, as far as anything that you've lost or maybe things that you've gained? Yeah, so I live at a I live right now in house about two minutes from campus, and. Uh, with about four other guys, and it's really helped me grow as a person and an individual to be more independent and learn to rely more on myself. And it's helped me grow um, substantially and just as a person, and that's been quite fun throughout the past couple of years. You've got this independent thing, and that's so critical as a man, as you're going to lead a family or what you do in your life. And 
making decisions. You're, you're looking at uh, a, a PA job uh, and getting that education. And has that helped you in some of the physical ailments, like with your surgery that you've dealt with, because you had some knowledge going into it? Most definitely. I kind of knew what to expect going into the surgery and also how to accelerate my rehab post-surgery, and that has been a huge factor in making sure that I stay on track and I am ahead to get back to where I was. Let's talk a little bit about your uh, high school career down at Ozark. Uh, you're a, a product of Mike Essick, one of the, uh, the great baseball coaches in the area and in the state for that matter. How was, how was his teaching and how did it affect your career? It was profound, and you know, the more I look back on it now, I appreciate it so much more than I did in the moment. You know, in the moment, I talked about this with Matt quite a bit recently. In the moment, he's somebody who I didn't really understand some of the lessons that he was trying to teach me at the time. And I, I understood a little bit of them, but now looking back, I really know what he was trying to express to us and get through to us. And I really wish that I would have understood more at that age because I think it would have accelerated my, de my development greatly now you're under the guidance of paul evans is there a difference in coaching there is um they they share similarities they're both they're going to tell you how it is they're going to be honest with you and up front with you no matter what the situation is and i really appreciate that but we're a little more independent here at missouri state and they trust you to get all of your work in um, and the help is there if you need it but for the most part, we're very self-sufficient, and guys pretty much know what they need to get done. In your observations of the team practicing this this fall and going through their drills, and I know Coach Gutton and Coach Evans and the, the entire staff put you guys through some rigorous drills indeed, what do you see about this team? Does it offer you optimism as if we have a season, that is, that the Bears can do some some things and make some noise in national baseball? Most certainly. We have a huge amount of talent this year, and if we come together as a team and, and stay close, I think we can make it a very deep run. We added some Juco pieces this year and some of the freshmen that we have coming in, counting all of our returners. We are very deep, and we are very excited for this season to see what we can accomplish. Forrest Barnes from Ozark, Missouri, and the Missouri State Bears visiting with us, and the Bears have... Are, are are your drills done? Or are you finished now for the fall? Yes, we have moved into winter workouts, and it is more individualized stuff now. Some of the pitchers are continuing to throw bullpens, and the hitters have still been hitting in the cage with Coach Lawson. But other than that, everything has been pretty much on our own. Describe to our audience, if you will, what a rehab from labrum surgery consists of. So right off the bat, um, about two days after surgery, we started rehab, and they had me on the bike just doing some range of motion, trying to get get everything loosened up just a little bit. And then for the first couple weeks, we were doing a lot of stuff just to make sure that those glute muscles and quad muscles continue to fire <laughs> just so they do not lose that capability and trying to keep some of that strength. And now we're progressing more into normal weightlifting activities and about the three month mark I'll be able to run again and then after month four if I'm feeling good I should be should be cleared to go off the mound and return to action. Did that influence your decision to uh, major in that uh, science of uh, sports and so forth and so on? It did not. Uh, I made that decision coming into my freshman year and in that, but it has been nice having that reference to fall back on throughout my rehab process, kind of having that prior knowledge of, of my body and what I need to do to be successful. And that said it all, folks, talking about Kirk, you can identify with that because that's precisely what Chase Kaufman talked about and the other athletes as well. You've got to fall back on that education because nothing is forever. And I'll tell you this about yeah. that. Uh, your dad being the influence that he's been on you, that's refreshing to hear. We've heard that throughout our interviews today. The other thing is when you look at Paul, that pitching master over there at Missouri State, I mean, he alone with Keith Gutton and his leadership with Keith have put more athletes in professional sports than any other duo in the history of Missouri State University. 
So you are on a great track. What's good about the advantage you might have is you're coming in there understanding the physical situation, but yet you had a tremendous influence with a father that understood college pitching and how to maybe get to the next level. Say you uh, get drafted and you get drafted before you graduate. Do you intend to come back and finish your degree after baseball or will you do it during baseball? It would really depend on the situation. If I was able to graduate and then go to the draft like I may be able to do now because of this extra year because of the coronavirus, um, I would like to graduate first. But if the situation is good enough to where I can leave and put myself in a good situation financially and athletically, I would like to do that, and then I would come back and finish my education at a later date. That's good to hear because I'm going to tell you, at 52, and I'm sitting here talking to you at 20, You've got an opportunity right now that your dad has recognized, Gutton has recognized, and Paul has recognized. And I, I think I hear it in your voice that you're recognizing it. Man, you got a wonderful, wonderful opportunity as, a, as an athlete and a student. So it's just refreshing to hear that. And I want to encourage you, and maybe you're already doing this, but share your story with young kids. Share your story with the elementaries in Ozark and in, throughout Springfield. There's some kids in the inner city that need to hear these kind of things. There's some kids that come from rural communities that maybe don't have the influence that maybe you've had or, or from uh, you know, suburban areas. I just think you got a neat story to tell and you got a neat example right there because you had had pain, you've had failure in, a, in, a, in an injury, and now you're coming back from it. But uh, I'm encouraged to meet you this morning, Forrest. This has really uh, it's been inspiring. Most definitely. Thank you for the opportunity. To you, Ned. I'm I'm losing my audio here just a tiny little bit. Yeah. Uh, Forrest, uh, very quickly, when you look back on the long year that you had in 2019, you had some pretty doggone good outings. Is there one that resonates with you more than any other as to a particularly good uh, outing for Forrest Barnes? Um, the Oral Roberts outing that I had when we went up there and played them in a midweek. I didn't feel like in the bullpen I had my best stuff and, and wasn't really sure how you know my arm was going to play coming out of the bullpen. But when I came in, everything got fired up, and, and I ended up throwing really well for three innings and helping my team come out with a much-needed victory, and that felt really good. There we go. There, that, even, even, with, uh, even with the polished athletes, Kirk, you remember when the, uh, the real good moments happened. You remember the bad ones, too, but the good ones are a whole lot more uh, favorable. Hey, Forrest, uh, do, you, do you have classes today? I do not have classes today. There we go. That, that says it all. He's like, all right, he's Forrest, like you Forrest, and I, Thank man. you very, very much for, uh, for being with us. Did you want to say something, Kirk? No, I just, you and I don't have class today either, so that's a good thing. Forrest, congratulations. <laughs> Keep up the good work, buddy. We'll see you at graduation and maybe in the Major League Baseball draft.